Have you ever wondered what it would be like to journey through the solar system? Imagine, if you will, the vastness of space, the exhilarating thrill of breaking Earth's gravitational pull, the mind-boggling distances between celestial bodies. Space travel, once the stuff of science fiction, is now within our grasp. But what does it truly entail? What sights and experiences does our cosmic neighborhood hold? The answers are more astounding than you might imagine. Now buckle up as we start our journey right here from our home planet Earth. As we leave Earth we first come across the inner planets Mercury, Venus, Earth and Mars. Starting our journey with Mercury, the smallest planet and the one closest to the Sun, we find a world of extremes. During the day, temperatures can reach up to 800 degrees Fahrenheit, while at night, they plummet to minus 290 degrees. The surface, akin to our Moon, is scarred with countless craters, a testament to its violent past. Next up is Venus our nearest neighbor and often referred to as Earth's evil twin. Despite its serene, bright appearance from Earth, Venus is anything but tranquil. It boasts the hottest surface of all planets, with temperatures soaring enough to melt lead. Its dense, toxic atmosphere creates a crushing pressure, comparable to being one kilometer deep in Earth's oceans. Then we have our home, Earth, the only known planet to support life. It's the largest of the inner planets and the only one with liquid water on its surface. The blue oceans, white clouds and green and brown landmasses create a stunningly beautiful view from space. Last but not least, we arrive at Mars, the red planet. Its distinctive color comes from iron oxide or rust on its surface. With the largest volcano and the deepest longest canyon in the solar system, Mars is a place of superlatives. From Mars, we now venture into the vast expanse of the asteroid belt. Beyond the asteroid belt, we find the gas giants, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. These colossal planets, cloaked in swirling atmospheres of hydrogen and helium, are a sight to behold. First up, we have Jupiter, the largest planet in our solar system. It's so massive that over a thousand Earths could fit inside it. But it's not just Jupiter's size that's impressive. There's also the Great Red Spot, a tempest larger than our own planet that's been raging for at least 400 years. Next we journey to Saturn, the jewel of our solar system. Encircling the planet is an intricate system of rings, composed of countless particles of ice and rock. While all the gas giants have ring systems, none are as spectacular as Saturn's. Onward to Uranus, an ice giant that's tilted on its side. This unique tilt creates extreme seasons with each lasting 21 years. Uranus is also the only planet in our solar system named after a Greek god, rather than a Roman one. Finally, we reach Neptune, the furthest planet from the Sun. Known for its deep blue color, Neptune is also home to the strongest winds in the solar system, blowing at speeds of over 2,000 kilometers an hour. Leaving Neptune behind we now approach the icy fringes of our solar system. Beyond Neptune we find Pluto and the countless icy bodies of the Kuiper Belt. A chilly reception awaits us as we venture further. First stop, Pluto. Once crowned the ninth planet of our solar system it now holds the title of a dwarf planet. No less significant though, Pluto, with its heart-shaped glacier, showcases the beauty that lies in the outer fringes of our solar system. Beyond Pluto, we encounter the Kuiper Belt, a vast frontier filled with frozen inhabitants. This icy realm is not just a barren wasteland, it's a treasure trove of comets, dwarf planets and other icy bodies. These cosmic entities preserved in the cold vacuum of space, provide us with a window into the early solar system. The Kuiper Belt is not the end, but the edge of the known, the beginning of the unexplored. As we journey back towards Earth we realize just how vast and diverse our solar system truly is. Back on Earth we look up at the night sky with a new understanding. We've journeyed through the inner planets, marveled at their unique traits, we've been awed by the gas giants with their swirling storms and endless clouds, traveled to the outer reaches where the sun's warmth barely reaches, our solar system's vastness and diversity is breathtaking, a cosmic ballet of celestial bodies each dancing to their own tune. Next time you gaze at the stars, remember, each point of light holds a universe of possibilities. Have you ever paused to wonder about the fiery sphere that lights up our sky, the sun? What exactly is this celestial body made of? Today, we delve deep into the heart of our solar system to unravel the mysteries of the sun's structure. At the core of the sun, where the magic truly happens, is the aptly named core. This innermost layer is a hotbed of nuclear fusion, where hydrogen atoms combine to form helium, releasing an incredible amount of energy in the process. This energy, in the form of light and heat, 
is what fuels our sun and by extension all life on Earth. Surrounding the core is the radiative zone. Here, energy generated in the core moves outward in the form of electromagnetic radiation or light. However, this isn't a swift journey. The densely packed atoms in this zone cause the energy to bounce around, extending its travel time to thousands of years. Encasing the radiative zone is the convective zone. In this layer, energy transport takes a different form. Instead of radiation, convection dominates. Hot plasma rises towards the sun's surface, cools down and then sinks back down in a continuous cycle, much like boiling water in a pot. The photosphere marks the sun's visible surface. This is the layer we see when we look at the sun, the one that emits the sunlight we experience on Earth. Its temperature, though cooler than the layers beneath it, still stands at a scorching 5,000 degrees Celsius. Above the photosphere lies the chromosphere, a layer marked by violent eruptions of gas known as solar flares. And finally, the outermost layer, the corona, an aura of plasma that's visible during a total solar eclipse. This layer, interestingly, is hotter than the sun's surface. So to recap, the sun is a multi-layered star, from the core, where energy is created through nuclear fusion, to the radiative and convective zones, where this energy is transported outward, to the photosphere, which emits the sun's light, and finally to the chromosphere and corona, the outer layers characterized by solar activity. In essence, our sun is a dynamic and complex entity, a beacon of energy production and transmission. Its structure, intricate and fascinating, is a testament to the wonders of the cosmos. Who knew that the daily light show in our sky was the result of such a splendid cosmic dance? Has your mind ever wandered to the skies above and pondered the secret behind the sun's brilliant glow? This celestial furnace, the sun, is our solar system's heart, pumping out energy that fuels life on Earth. But what's the mechanism behind this radiant beacon? The answer lies in a process called nuclear fusion, a spectacular dance of atomic particles occurring deep within the sun's core. Here, temperatures reach a staggering 15 million degrees Celsius, and the pressure is 200 billion times that of Earth's atmosphere. Under these extreme conditions, hydrogen atoms, the sun's primary ingredient, collide with such force that they fuse together, creating helium. This process of fusion releases an immense amount of energy, equivalent to billions of atomic bombs every second. But this energy isn't immediately in the form of light and heat, instead it starts off as high-energy photons, tiny packets of energy that move at light speed. However, the sun's dense core traps these photons causing them to bounce around like pinballs in an arcade game. This journey from the core to the sun's surface isn't a quick one, it can take a photon up to a million years to reach the surface. Once it finally breaks free, it races across the vacuum of space, reaching Earth in just over 8 minutes. This relentless stream of photons is what we perceive as sunlight. Now you might wonder if the sun is constantly converting hydrogen into helium, won't it eventually run out of fuel? Yes, but not anytime soon. The sun has enough hydrogen to keep this fusion process going for another 5 billion years. So the heat and light we experience on Earth are the result of a cosmic dance happening 93 million miles away, a dance of atomic particles under extreme conditions, creating a fusion reaction that produces photons. These photons journey for thousands of years before finally escaping the sun's surface and speeding across space to warm our planet. In summary, the sun's light and heat are the products of nuclear fusion where hydrogen atoms combine to form helium, releasing energy in the form of photons. These photons, after a long journey, reach the Earth's surface as the sunlight and warmth we experience every day. Despite its constant energy production, the sun has enough fuel to keep this process going for billions more years. Isn't it fascinating that the warmth you feel on your skin on a sunny day began as a tiny particle in the heart of the sun, embarking on a million-year journey to reach you? The sun's energy production is a testament to the power and wonder of the universe, a daily reminder of our connection to the cosmos. Have you ever wondered how much the sun, a fiery ball of gas 93 million miles away, impacts our everyday weather and long-term climate on Earth? The sun, in all its blazing glory, is not just a celestial body brightening our day. It is the primal powerhouse, the primary source of Earth's heat and light that fuels life as we know it. Think of Earth as a colossal, complex engine and the sun as its fuel, pumping energy into the system. 
This energy is what drives our planet's climate, influencing everything from the whisper of the winds to the dance of ocean currents. It's the sun's radiant energy that determines our world's temperatures, creating intricate weather patterns and birthing storms. This isn't just about enjoying a sunny day at the park or tanning at the beach. The sun's role extends far beyond that. So, the sun doesn't just give us a nice day at the beach, it fundamentally shapes our world's climate. To understand the sun's impact, we first need to talk about something called the solar constant. Now, don't let the term constant fool you. The solar constant isn't as constant as it might sound. It refers to the average amount of solar radiation that Earth receives at the outer edge of its atmosphere. Picture this. Every square meter of the Earth's outer atmosphere gets roughly 1,360 watts of solar energy on a sunny day. That's a lot of power. But here's the thing, even the tiniest fluctuations in this solar constant can have significant effects on our planet's climate. Imagine turning up the heat in your home by just a fraction. You'd feel the difference, right? Well, that's what happens with the Earth. Even small increases in solar energy can cause the Earth to warm up leading to changes in our climate. It's a delicate balance with even small changes in solar energy having the potential to disrupt our climate. Now that we know about the solar constant, let's delve into the mysterious world of solar cycles. Our sun, despite appearing constant and unchanging, goes through an approximately 11-year cycle. This cycle is marked by periods of increased solar activity, known as solar maximums, and periods of decreased activity, known as solar minimums. It's a rhythm that has been observed for centuries and provides an intriguing look into the dynamic nature of our sun. Solar maximums are characterized by an increase in the number of sunspots and solar flares. These are periods when the sun is at its most active, releasing more energy and solar radiation. Conversely, during solar minimums, the sun is quieter, with fewer sunspots and solar flares and less energy being released. Now you may be wondering, what does this have to do with Earth's climate? Well, it's quite simple. These fluctuations in solar activity can cause slight variations in the amount of solar energy reaching the Earth. During solar maximums, when the Sun is more active, slightly more energy reaches our planet. This can contribute to a small but measurable increase in global temperatures. On the flip side, during solar minimums, when the Sun is less active, slightly less solar energy reaches Earth. This can lead to a minor decrease in global temperatures. However, it's important to note that these temperature changes are relatively small and are often overshadowed by other climate factors, such as greenhouse gases and volcanic activity. Nevertheless, understanding these solar cycles and their impact on Earth's climate is crucial. It can help us predict future climate trends and better comprehend the intricate dance between our planet and its parent star. Solar cycles are not just celestial phenomena, they are part of a grand cosmic ballet that affects life on Earth in subtle but profound ways. Studying them helps us unravel the mystery of how our planet's climate has changed over the ages and how it might change in the future. Solar cycles are just one more piece of the puzzle in understanding the complex relationship between the Sun and Earth's climate. But what about global warming? Is the Sun responsible for the Earth's rising temperatures? Well, let's clear this up. The Sun indeed is a key player in Earth's climate system. Its energy fuels our weather patterns, and longer-term changes in solar radiation can impact climate trends. However, it's important to note that the current trend of accelerated global warming can't be attributed to changes in the Sun's output. Scientific research points to human activities, particularly the burning of fossil fuels like coal and oil, as the primary cause of recent global warming. These activities release large amounts of carbon dioxide and other greenhouse gases into the atmosphere. These gases trap heat from the sun, causing the Earth to warm, an effect known as the greenhouse effect. This warming trend is what we call global warming. In the end, while the sun plays a vital role in our climate, it's our actions here on Earth that are the primary drivers of the current climate crisis. Have you ever wondered what makes our sun more than just a typical star in the sky? As we journey through the cosmos, it's easy to overlook the singular star that holds a unique position in our lives, our sun. This fiery sphere, a blazing beacon amidst billions of stars, is the very center of our solar system. But it's so much more than that. Our sun is the life-giving force that fuels our existence. It's a colossal fusion reactor that generates the energy that drives life on Earth. 
It's the gravitational anchor that keeps our planet and its siblings in a harmonious dance around it. In the grand cosmic ballet, our sun is the prima ballerina, the star performer around which everything else revolves. Its importance cannot be overstated. It's not just a star, it's our star. So let's delve deeper into understanding this blazing ball of gas that is, in essence, the heart of our solar system. What exactly comprises the sun, the brightest object in our sky? Well, the sun, much like an onion, has several layers, each with its unique characteristics and functions. Let's start at the heart of it all, the core. This is the sun's central region where its energy is created. It's here that nuclear fusion occurs, where hydrogen atoms collide and fuse to form helium. This process releases an immense amount of energy in the form of light and heat. Now, moving outward we have the photosphere. This is the layer that we can see from Earth, the sun's visible surface. It's where the light produced in the core finally escapes into space, and it's why the sun shines so brightly. Above the photosphere is the chromosphere, a layer of the sun's atmosphere that emits a reddish glow. Though this glow is usually drowned out by the brighter light from the photosphere, it can be seen during total solar eclipses. And finally, the outermost layer of the sun's atmosphere, the corona. This layer extends millions of miles into space and is significantly hotter than the surface of the sun. The corona is also visible during a total solar eclipse, where it appears as a halo around the sun. But the sun isn't just layers, it has a powerful magnetic field that extends beyond its surface, twisting and turning as the sun rotates. This magnetic field leads to fascinating solar activities like sunspots, which are cooler, darker areas on the sun's surface, and solar flares which are sudden, powerful explosions that release a burst of radiation. These features not only define the sun, but also significantly impact our solar system and life on Earth. They influence everything from the northern and southern lights, to our planet's climate, and even the technology we use daily. So next time you look up at the sky, remember, there's more to the sun than meets the eye. But how does the sun, situated 93 million miles away, influence our daily lives and the larger solar system. Think of the sun as a celestial puppeteer, its gravitational pull acting as invisible strings that hold the planets in their orbits. This gravitational force is so strong that it not only keeps the Earth and other planets in check, but it also influences the movement of asteroids, comets, and even distant space dust. The sun's influence, however, extends beyond its gravitational pull. It's also our primary source of light and heat. Without the sun's radiant energy, our planet would be a dark, frozen wasteland. It's the sun's heat and light that make life possible on Earth, powering photosynthesis in plants, which in turn fuels the food chain and drives our planet's climate and weather. But the sun's role doesn't stop at sustaining life on Earth. It's also a driver of space weather, the flow of charged particles that stream out from the sun. These solar winds, along with other solar activities like flares and coronal mass ejections, can have significant impacts on modern technology. They can disrupt satellite communications, power grids, and even pose a risk to astronauts in space. In short, without the sun, life as we know it would cease to exist. Our sun, a seemingly distant star, has an immense and intricate role in our daily lives and the larger solar system. So, isn't our sun much more than just another star? Absolutely it is. The sun with its intricate features not only plays a pivotal role in our solar system, but also breathes life into our Earth. It's the engine that drives our seasons, fuels photosynthesis, and even influences our moods. A marvel of nature, the sun is truly our lifeline. Next time you feel the warmth of the sun on your skin, remember, you're feeling the touch of a star, our very own star, the sun. Have you ever pondered over the question, how close can we get to the sun? It's a fascinating thought, isn't it? Well, let's embark on this astronomical journey together, shall we? First, it's essential to understand that the sun is a giant ball of hot, glowing gases, with temperatures that reach up to 15 million degrees Celsius at its core. That's hotter than anything we've ever experienced on Earth. So, getting close to the sun isn't as easy as packing a suitcase and hopping on a space shuttle. Then comes the challenge of space travel. The distance from Earth to the Sun is approximately 93 million miles. That's nearly 400 times the distance from the Earth to the Moon. Even at the speed of light, it would take around 8 minutes to reach the Sun. However, with current technology, a spacecraft can travel at about 56,000 miles per hour. At this speed it would take around 7 months to reach the Sun. 
And let's not forget about the sun's intense gravitational pull. It's about 28 times stronger than Earth's gravity. So, a spacecraft would need to be traveling at a speed of over 600,000 miles per hour to escape the sun's pull. Now you might be wondering, despite all these challenges, have we ever attempted to get close to the sun? The answer is yes. NASA's Parker Solar Probe, launched in 2018, is on a mission to get as close as possible to the sun. It aims to get within 4 million miles of the sun's surface, which is seven times closer than any spacecraft has been before. To withstand the extreme heat and radiation, the probe is equipped with a heat shield that can endure temperatures up to 1,300 degrees Celsius. That's hot enough to melt most metals. So, to summarize, getting close to the sun is no easy task. It requires overcoming extreme temperatures, vast distances, and intense gravitational pull. But with the advancements in technology, we've been able to send a probe to study the sun from a closer distance than ever before. In the grand scheme of the universe, the sun is just one of countless stars, each with its own unique set of challenges and mysteries to explore. So, while we continue to push the boundaries of our understanding and capabilities, the question remains, how close can we get to the sun? As of now, the answer lies within 4 million miles. But who knows what the future holds? After all, the universe is full of surprises. Ever pondered about the sheer size of our sun? It's a question that can really put things into perspective. Let's start with a comparison to something we all know, our home planet, Earth. The sun's diameter is a staggering 109 times that of Earth. Now, imagine this in terms of volume. If you could hollow out the sun and start packing it with Earth's, guess how many you could fit in there? You might be thinking thousands, or maybe even hundreds of thousands, but the reality is even more mind-boggling. Over a million Earths could snugly fit inside the sun. That's right, more than a million. This massive size is what allows the sun to have such a strong gravitational pull, keeping all the planets in our solar system in their orbits. So the next time you feel big, remember the sun could hold a million Earths. Feel hot during the summer? Imagine if you were close to the sun. The sun, a glowing sphere of hot plasma at the heart of our solar system, boasts an incredible core temperature of around 15 million degrees Celsius. Yes, you heard that right, 15 million degrees. It makes our hottest summer days seem like a winter's chill in comparison. To give you a bit of context, the hottest temperature ever created by humans on Earth was a mere 4 billion degrees Celsius in a lab, and that was just for a fraction of a second. The sun maintains its scorching 15 million degrees round the clock, every day of the year. It's a relentless furnace, fueled by the power of nuclear fusion, converting hydrogen into helium at its core. The sun's staggering temperature is a testament to its raw power and energy. It makes you appreciate the gentle warmth we feel on Earth from 93 million miles away. That's one hot ball of gas in our sky. Ever wonder where all our energy comes from? Well, let's dive into the heart of our solar system, the sun. Its powerful energy is the result of a process called nuclear fusion. Picture this, deep within the sun's core, under immense pressure and heat, hydrogen atoms are forced together to form helium. This process in its simplest terms is nuclear fusion. But here's where the magic happens. When hydrogen atoms merge to form helium, a tiny bit of their mass is lost. This lost mass is converted into energy according to Einstein's famous equation, E equals mt squared. That's a lot of energy. Every second, the sun transforms about 4 million tons of its own matter into heat and light. This energy, radiating out from the sun, is what we experience as sunlight and warmth, a continuous, colossal, cosmic fireworks display in the heart of our solar system. So, the sun is essentially a giant nuclear power plant in the sky. How old do you think the sun is? Well, our brilliant celestial orb is approximately 4.6 billion years old. Yes, that's billion with a B. Isn't that something? It's mind-boggling to think about, isn't it? This middle-aged star of ours is about halfway through its life. It's like the sun is in its midlife crisis, but instead of buying a sports car, it's slowly converting hydrogen into helium. Over the next 5 billion years or so, things will start to change dramatically. Our sun will begin to expand, transforming into what we call a red giant. It will get so large that it could swallow up the inner planets, including Earth. But don't pack your bags just yet. Eventually it will shed its outer layers and collapse into a dense white dwarf. But there's no need to worry. It's comforting to know that our sun still has a few billion years left. Have you ever thought about how much we rely on the sun? From the grand cosmic scale to the infinitesimal details of life on Earth, 
The sun's influence is both vast and intimate. Imagine a dance with the sun leading and earth gracefully following. This celestial waltz is held together by the sun's gravity, which keeps us and our fellow planets in our respective orbits. Without it, we'd be just another rogue planet lost in the vastness of space. Now let's dive into the heart of life on Earth. The sun's light fuels photosynthesis, the process that allows plants to convert solar energy into food. It's the starting point of nearly every food chain, making the sun a silent partner in sustaining life as we know it. But the sun's impact isn't always benign. Solar flares, eruptions on the sun's surface can send waves of charged particles towards Earth, disrupting our technology. So, while the sun may seem distant and unchanging, it plays a vital role in our daily lives. Have you ever wondered why the day suddenly turns into night during a solar eclipse? It's a spectacle that has captivated humankind for centuries. A cosmic ballet of celestial bodies that transforms day into night and casts an eerie twilight over the Earth. Throughout history, people have been enthralled and mystified by this rare event. Ancient cultures saw it as a sign from the gods, while today, it's a phenomenon that drives millions to travel across continents just to witness a few fleeting moments of twilight at midday. Solar eclipses are more than just a beautiful spectacle. They're a testament to the precision of our universe, a dance choreographed by the laws of physics. The moon, perfectly aligned between the earth and the sun, casts its shadow over us, creating a temporary night in the middle of the day. The dance of celestial bodies results in this amazing spectacle, but what exactly happens during a solar eclipse? When the moon passes between the sun and the earth we witness a solar eclipse. This cosmic event as mesmerizing as it is, has a simple science behind it. Let's break it down. The sun as we know, is our primary source of light. The earth where we reside orbits around the sun, and the moon orbits around the earth. During a solar eclipse the moon comes directly between the sun and the earth, casting a shadow on our planet. This shadow creates a temporary darkness which we perceive as a solar eclipse. But here's the intriguing part. We have a new moon every month so why don't we witness a solar eclipse each time? The answer is in the moon's orbit. The moon's path around the earth is not perfectly circular nor is it on the same plane as the earth's orbit around the sun, it's slightly tilted, so most times the moon's shadow misses the earth entirely. However, every now and then, everything aligns just right and we get to witness an eclipse, but not all eclipses are the same. We have three main types, total, partial, and annular. During a total solar eclipse the moon completely covers the sun. It's a breathtaking sight where day turns into night and the sun's outer atmosphere, the corona, becomes visible. In a partial solar eclipse the moon only partially obstructs the sun, creating a fascinating crescent sun effect. Lastly, during an annular eclipse, the moon is at its furthest point from the Earth in its orbit, making it appear smaller. Hence, it doesn't completely cover the sun, leaving a bright, fiery ring around the moon. This is often referred to as a ring of fire. So, the science behind solar eclipses is a dance of cosmic bodies. It's about the sun, the Earth, and the moon moving in their celestial paths. It's about the alignment, the orbits, and the distances between these bodies. So the alignment of the Sun, Moon and Earth creates the captivating event we know as a solar eclipse. Let's recap the key points and delve into some fascinating facts about solar eclipses. Solar eclipses are a cosmic phenomenon that occur when the Moon passes between the Sun and the Earth, blocking the Sun's light and casting a shadow on Earth. This celestial event can be partial, annular or total, depending on the alignment and proximity of the celestial bodies involved. In the course of human history, solar eclipses have been perceived differently across cultures. Some viewed them with awe and wonder, while others saw them as ominous portents. Ancient Greeks, for instance, believed that a solar eclipse was a sign of angry gods. And in Chinese mythology, it was thought that a celestial dragon was devouring the sun. Not just a spectacle, solar eclipses have played a pivotal role in scientific discoveries. The most notable example is perhaps the total solar eclipse of 1919. During this event, Sir Arthur Eddington confirmed Einstein's theory of general relativity by observing the bending of starlight around the sun, a phenomenon known as gravitational lensing. This marked a monumental leap forward in our understanding of the universe. Now, here's a fascinating fact. Did you know that total solar eclipses are becoming slightly less frequent? This is due to the moon gradually moving away from the Earth at a rate of approximately one and a half inches per year. 
However, don't let the allure of this cosmic ballet tempt you into looking directly at the sun during an eclipse without proper protection. The sun's intense light can cause serious eye damage, a condition known as solar retinopathy. Always use specially designed solar viewing glasses or indirect viewing methods to safely observe an eclipse. Solar eclipses, a cosmic ballet choreographed by the laws of physics, are indeed a sight to behold. The next time one happens you'll know exactly what's going on behind the scenes. Have you ever pondered how the Sun, our closest star, has guided travelers throughout history? The Sun has always been an indispensable beacon for ancient civilizations. From the earliest seafarers to the desert caravans, the Sun's position in the sky was used as a compass, a reliable guide during the day. By observing the Sun's rise and set points, early navigators could determine their direction. But the Sun offered even more. Its rise and set points on the horizon shift subtly as the seasons change. This gradual movement offered early mariners a crude form of latitude measurement. They knew for instance that when the sun set at a certain point, they were at a specific latitude. This understanding of the sun's movements was a crucial step in the evolution of navigation. So the sun played a significant role in early navigation, but how did we refine these methods over time? As time progressed, so did our understanding of the sun's position and our ability to use it for more accurate navigation. One of the most significant advancements in this field was the development of the sextant, an instrument that allowed mariners to measure the angle between the horizon and the sun at its zenith, or noon. This angle, known as the altitude of the sun, could be used to provide a precise latitude measurement. Now you might be wondering, how does this work? Well, the concept is relatively simple. The Earth is a sphere, and as it rotates, different parts of it are exposed to the Sun. At local noon, when the Sun is at its highest point in the sky, the angle it makes with the horizon provides a direct measurement of your latitude. But what about longitude, you might ask? Well, before the invention of accurate timepieces, mariners used the concept of local noon to determine longitude. By comparing the local noon at their current location with the noon at a known location, they could determine their east-west position. Of course, this method wasn't perfect, but it was a start. Now let's talk about the Nautical Almanac. This is a publication that provides the positions of celestial bodies at any given time. It's like a roadmap of the sky. Mariners use it in conjunction with a sextant to navigate the open sea. By comparing the observed position of the sun with the position listed in the Nautical Almanac, mariners can calculate their precise location. With these advancements, the sun became not just a beacon of direction, but a tool for precise positioning on the open sea. It's a shining example of how our understanding of the natural world can lead to practical applications that enhance our lives and our exploration of the world around us. You might be wondering, does the sun still hold relevance in our age of GPS and digital maps? Indeed it does. Even in this era of advanced technology, the sun continues to be a reliable guide in navigation. Mariners, for instance, are still taught celestial navigation as a backup skill. This is crucial because, believe it or not, there are still remote parts of our planet where GPS signal is weak or non-existent. Also, solar navigation isn't just limited to our earthly travels. The principles of solar navigation are also used in space exploration. For example, spacecrafts use the sun's position to orient themselves and determine their course in the vast expanse of space. It's like having a cosmic compass guiding us through the uncharted territories of the universe. So, even in our modern age, the sun remains a crucial tool for navigators. It's more than just a celestial body, it's a beacon, guiding us on our journeys both on Earth and beyond. From ancient mariners to modern astronauts, the sun has been our constant companion in navigation. It's been a guiding light, quite literally, from the earliest days of seafaring exploration. Our ancestors gazed upon it with reverence, using its position in the sky to plot their course across the vast uncharted waters. Fast forward to the age of technology, and the sun continues to play a pivotal role. Whether it's aiding in the calibration of satellite systems, or serving as a backup for GPS technology, the sun's importance in our navigational endeavors remains undiminished. Today, our understanding of the sun, and our ability to harness its navigational potential, has evolved in leaps and bounds. We've moved from simple observations with the naked eye to complex calculations and precise instruments, and yet the sun's role remains as fundamental as ever. So next time you find yourself lost, just look up. The sun, our oldest navigational tool, might just point you in the right direction.
Have you ever gazed up at the sun and wondered, how much longer will this celestial giant continue to burn? It's a question that, while seemingly daunting, science has managed to tackle with remarkable precision. Our sun, that dazzling star at the center of our solar system, has been shining for about 5 billion years. But even stars have their limits. The sun, like all stars, is on a life cycle, and one day, it will exhaust its nuclear fuel. Stars, including our sun, are born in nebulae, enormous clouds of dust and gas in space. The sun began its life as a collapsing cloud of gas and dust, heating up as it shrank until the pressure and temperature were high enough to trigger nuclear fusion. Hydrogen atoms started to fuse into helium, releasing vast amounts of energy. This process, which is still going on today, is what makes the sun shine. The sun is a G-type main-sequence star, or G-dwarf star, which means it's in the prime of its life. Right now, it's burning hydrogen to produce helium in its core. This phase, known as the main sequence, lasts about 10 billion years for a star of the sun's mass. However, the sun is already halfway through its main sequence phase. In about 5 billion years, it will have consumed all the hydrogen in its core. Without this fuel, the core will contract under the force of gravity, causing the outer layers of the sun to expand. The sun will then become a red giant. As a red giant, the sun will be hundreds of times larger than it is now, so large that it will swallow Mercury and Venus and possibly even Earth. It will shine thousands of times brighter than it does today, but its surface will be cooler, giving it a red hue. Eventually the core of the sun will become hot enough to start burning helium into carbon, but this phase won't last long. In about a billion years, it will exhaust its helium fuel. The core will contract again, and the outer layers will be expelled into space creating a planetary nebula. The sun will then enter its final phase as a white dwarf, a small dense hot object about the size of Earth. It will slowly cool and fade over billions of years, eventually becoming a black dwarf, a cold, dark, inert remnant of a star. So to summarize, the sun is midway through its life, burning hydrogen to produce helium. In about 5 billion years it will become a red giant, swallowing the inner planets and burning helium. After that, it will shed its outer layers and become a white dwarf, slowly fading over billions of years until it becomes a black dwarf. While the death of the sun may seem like a cataclysmic event, it's just part of the life cycle of stars. And don't worry, we still have about 5 billion years of sunshine left. The sun's eventual demise is a reminder of the grandeur of the cosmos the intricate workings of the universe, and our place within it. It's a fascinating journey, one that highlights the beauty and the transience of existence in the cosmos.